Me and the buddy played this game in an afternoon after grabbing some burgers. Three hours later, we were as full of game-induced satisfaction as we were of buttered buns and fried meat. It's an RPG maker, Detective Noir, with 8-bit styling. It costs less than any cup of coffee I can remember buying. You play as a teal-haired PI checking out a murder. It's a whodunit, or at the end of the game you can say, they done it. The game builds tension well and keeps you asking questions right to the wrap-up. It wasn't a complex story, but it had character. It in fact had quite a few characters. Me and my buddy debated over those said characters' agendas all the way through. At the end of the day, this is an RPG Maker game, nothing about the way it controls is fun. To circumvent this, the ambiance has to be worth thinking around in. I like the area design and the 8-bit aesthetics. It really does remind you what you think a Gen 1 Pokemon game looks like, doesn't it? I went back and had an actual look and they didn't look anywhere near as good as this, but the nostalgia is there. My friend liked the color coding and how it was consistent with the text and area design. I thought the various moving elements of the sets and different filters made the game pretty screenshotable. I liked the strange little story artifacts that gave the entire thing flavor. I don't know why there are Turing test passing grab ass anthrorobos in this noisy, noir 1960s setting. I don't know why weird keys are needed to access most of the house due to strange color coded cock block locks. I'm not quite sure why our character can spend a minute reading a book to double their persuasive repertoire. All these things are stupendously gamey. They're in the same vein as Power Up Mushrooms and Mario and 95% of the stuff in the Disgaea games. I love it. It's by no means perfect or even great. The dialogue can be cliched and the one-liners rarely land. Sometimes the persuasion system can feel rather pointless since you never know what your character is really going to say or how the other party is going to react to it. You are never really penalized for failure, at which point it feels like the mechanic itself is just a thin abstraction of what amounts to more dialogue boxes. The game is a visual novel with Groucho Marx glasses. Despite that, you can still appreciate the characters and their individual designs. They look neat. I'm sure they've existed for a while before they were put to digital paper. The world has just enough going on to make the three hours you spend hanging out inside it a pleasant time. It's got weird little specifics that are fun to think about, like the details of the robot design or the house architecture. A lot of the details in the game feel like that. They're fun to think about. These little points are outpourings. The little visual flair here and there and extra love poured into giving the game a consistent chronology are all the brainchild of a certain person's proclivities. The at times hard to read stylized font frames the dialogue in a very particular way. The little jagged edges tell of an individual. Lockhart Indigo is fast fashion made with loving care and a verisimilitude that transcends its amateurish veneer. It plays like a game jam offering and costs two dollars. The world needs more Lockhart Indigos and more people willing to play them. I'd rather have one of these for every hundred horny anime games we get on Steam. Thanks.